We're going to start with the Oklahoma State Cowboys, who finished first in the Big 12 last year. Of course, they did lose the Big 12 title game, but I'm going by standings. They won the Big 12 regular season and then, of course, lost the rematch to Baylor in the Big 12 title game. But this team was interesting, to say the least. Uh, Very, very interesting. And we'll go ahead and pull this up on the screen here. Mike Gundy, 12-2 and two last year. They did win the Fiesta Bowl. That was certainly a big, big, big win. But uh, but went, you know, 12-1. and one, Or, uh, excuse me, excuse me, 11-2 in the regular season, if you include the championship game, 11-1 and one otherwise. If you look at it, they were closer to a 10-2 and two football team as opposed to 11-1 and one in the regular season. Uh, found that kind of interesting. Kind of interesting, but of course, you're not going to be 100% on every postgame win expectancy. Went 8 and 1 in the conference last year. The projected SP Plus record for this season is 8 and 4. Returning production number 105 in the country. It's 55%. That's definitely not good. Better on offense than they are on defense. And who did the defense lose quite a bit? The offense was a little bit of a disaster. Not exactly what you would expect from a Mike Gundy football team. They were number 97 in PPA per drive. I mean, that's just, I don't even, inexplainable, really. Uh, Spencer Sanders, not great. He's been the starter for quite a while. He has shown flashes over and over and over again, and he is back. And you know, we'll go ahead and start off with the offense. They lose Jalen Warren, the running back, who kind of took over. They lose Tay Martin, the wide receiver. But Spencer Sanders is back. He had 668 yards rushing last year, 2,800 yards passing, 26 total touchdowns. He did have 12 interceptions. You have to wonder this year, can he get the offense to another level with their wide receiver, Presley? you got to fix the running game. For whatever reason, they are hit or miss when it comes to the running game. Last year, number 118 in rushing plays PPA. The offensive line was number 111 in stuff rate. They couldn't block. Uh, can new guys like the running back, Ollie Gordon, turn that around? I, I mean, it remains to be seen. I don't think that Gundy has lost any of his chops as far as an offensive play caller, but... Obviously, we'll have to see about that going into this season. They were number 49 in passing success rate, which is a little bit shocking considering what we have seen from Spencer Sanders, but he's got a little bit of that Adrian Martinez gene in him where sometimes he doesn't show up, but sometimes he does. Obviously, you saw big-time things out of him against Notre Dame in the bowl game. We'll see if they can continue that going into this season. As far as the defense, they did lose Jim Knowles. That was a massive, massive loss. He got hired away by Ohio State. Uh, Derek Mason will be the new defense coordinator, and that's a huge hire. Just a massive hire. Mason did good things at Auburn last year. He's always been a good defensive coordinator. Obviously, he was hired away from Stanford as their defensive coordinator to become the new head coach at Vanderbilt. Had a decent run at Vanderbilt until it just completely ran off the rails there towards the end. They've only got four starters back on defense here. Three on the defensive line. One in the secondary. They're losing Knowles, but again, Mason, fantastic hire. Can Mason maintain the same uh, same productivity with only 127 snaps returning at linebacker, and they didn't really bring in any transfers? Uh, there's going to be growing pains on defense big time this year. I, I mean, they were number four in defensive PPA per drive, number five in rushing success rate allowed, number 20 in passing success rate allowed. This was a fantastic defense last year. Like, this was the reason why they won games. They're projected favorites in seven games. There's eight games that are toss-ups. And you're going to see this a lot in the Big 12. Those toss-ups are, for me, any game that is within one score or projected to be within one score. Eight of them out of the 12-game schedule. So, really, they could just go anywhere. The win total sits at 8.5. It's juiced to the under at minus 125. Uh, To win the conference, they're plus 600, you know, 6-1. to I put down for keys to the season, Spencer Sanders has to step up, and the offensive line, even with three interior offensive linemen back, they got to be better in the running game. They were pretty decent in pass protection last year. Uh, Defense has led the way for the last couple of seasons. They are going to need to lean on that offense again, which is where Gundy has shined in the past. Um, The other question I've got, can the team fix their turnover issue? They were number 71 in turnover margin, number 96 in the country in total turnovers lost you got to find a way to not beat yourself, especially if your defense is not to the point where you can just lean on them, right? It, when they would turn the football over last year, they had a defense that they could lean on that, you know, they didn't have to worry about the other team scoring touchdowns every time. They could find a way to either get the ball back or they could get stops. 
Are they going to be able to get those stops this year with only 40% of the defense returning? That's what I'm curious about, especially with Knowles gone. That's, that is a huge, huge loss. I've got them at 8-4. I, I don't think – there's a lot of people that expect a lot out of this team, especially with a starting quarterback coming back. But I, I don't know that the starting quarterback is somebody that you can really lean on. I've got losses – to Texas Tech at TCU, Kansas State, and Oklahoma. I got a win over Texas. I got a win over Baylor. Uh, you know, it, I just feel like crazy stuff will go on with this team and with this conference. It, so don't hold me to any of those. Um, but you could totally see maybe a loss to Iowa State, but a win over Oklahoma. You could see a loss to uh, a, a loss to Texas, but a win over TCU. I mean, just anything here. But eight and four is around where I'm looking at for uh, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Now, again, win total sits at 8.5. It's juiced to the under. That means that the sports books expect it to go under there. I tend to agree with them. But would it surprise me if Gundy pulls something out of his rear end again? It just seems in years where people don't expect much out of them, they do really, really well. In years where people don't expect much out of them, they, you know... Or excuse me, in years where people expect a lot, they don't do well. In years where nobody expects anything, they really do well. This is a year where the expectations are kind of high, so I'm going to think that they will go a little lower than usual. So that's that's my thought process on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.